Yo, what's going on guys, Arax here, and welcome back to another video for Dauntless. Hopefully you guys had a chance to catch my video the other day where I spoke more broadly about the combat in the game, the way it feels, the weapons, behemoths, etc. And if you did, then you'll know that I said I have plans to follow up with a series of in-depth weapon tutorials, taking a look at each of the four weapons that will be available in the Alpha. Well, today we're going to kick things off by talking about my personal favourite weapon, and a weapon that we haven't seen a great deal of, the Chain Blades. <laughs> those of you that are going to be jumping into the Founders Alpha next week, this will allow you to get an early understanding of how the weapon works and pick up some tips before you start playing. And for those of you guys still on the fence and perhaps just want to see some more gameplay, well then this should also fill that void too. Either way, if you do enjoy this video and you do find it helpful, then a like would be super appreciated and be sure to comment down below and let me know what you guys think or if you have any questions. Now, to begin with, the Chain Blades are one of the most versatile weapons in Dauntless, offering fast and nimble combos up close, as well as the ability to attack and poke from a distance should you be faced with a particularly aggressive or defensive behemoth. Pair that with the fact that you also have the ability to both get in and out of combat at the press of a button, and you have the makings of a rather lethal weapon, allowing you to essentially dive in and dish out quick burst damage, and then get out before things get heated like some sort of Dauntless ninja. However, this is also the most technical of the four weapons, since a lot of the actions I just spoke about rely rather heavily on either stamina or a weapon specific resource that builds the more you fight. So while it does provide you with a good number of options, you'll only truly benefit from those if you're able to play aggressively. So if after all of that, you're thinking to yourself, yep, that sounds like my kind of weapon, then here is everything you need to know about the chain blades. To begin with, much like every other weapon in Dauntless, you have two main attack buttons, X and Y, or left mouse button and right mouse button. I play Dauntless with a controller since I think it feels best, so I'll be detailing all moves in this video with controller buttons, but in the event that you're a keyboard and mouse player, then quite simply, X is left mouse button, Y is right mouse button, RB is your Q, and dodge or B is space. Now, for the Chain Blades, X is your close range attack. With this, you use the sickle or the blade component of your weapon to dish out quick attacks within arm's reach. You can combo up to five of these attacks together to pull off what is referred to as the bladed edge. This will become one of your bread and butter combos since it's quick, it doesn't require any stamina investment, and if you're playing it safe, perhaps fighting a new behemoth that you're not familiar with, it's also going to be the easiest thing to get out of. On the flip side, you have your Y button attacks. These are your ranged attacks and take full advantage of the chain component of your weapon. You have relatively good reach with these and while they don't do as much damage as your X attacks, they're great for attacking monsters at a safe distance or if you're fighting something like Quill Shot, you can even use it to sever his quills. It is however worth noting that each of these attacks consume stamina, so you want to be careful when using these since if you run out of stamina, you can't dodge, and if you can't dodge, well, you're putting yourself in a rather dangerous predicament. That aside, you can chain three wire attacks together to perform a chain fling combo. Just make sure, as mentioned, that you're always monitoring your stamina if you intend to use this a lot. Additionally, these ranged attacks are also your elemental attacks, so if you have a weapon with a certain type of ether, which I'll speak about later, then these attacks are how you'll be dishing out that damage. So even if you do plan to stick close to your target and fight right next to them, working these into your combo is a vital part of your chain blade strategy. Speaking of which, if you then start mixing these two together, X, X, Y will perform these swinging blades where you do two close attacks and round it out with a spinning wide attack. Useful if perhaps say mid combo, the behemoth jumps back or gets knocked over, then the final wide attack has a chance of catching them. In addition to this, if you sneak an X attack in at the end, you can then round it out with a close range finisher slice. Now, something else worth noting about this combo specifically, it's the only time you'll be able to pull off a Y attack without it consuming stamina. Notice how at the very end, the spin doesn't deplete your stamina. Sure, this might not be the most powerful combo, but since it's free, it's also a safe way to take advantage of the elemental ether on your weapon, should you have it. And moving on from there, if you input 3x attacks followed by a y attack, you'll instead round up the combo with the blade spin, or as I like to call it, the Bruce Lee special. With this, you swing your chain blade in a vertical flurry, attacking the monster multiple times. And what's more, if you hold down the y button instead of just pressing it, then you can keep this move going for quite some time. Do of course bear in mind, the longer you hold this, the more stamina it consumes. So this can be a very dangerous move. High risk, high reward. 
If you're in a situation where the Behemoth is tired, knocked down, or just in a vulnerable position, then getting off this combo will allow you to dish out some serious damage. But since it is so stamina reliant, you've got to ensure that you're always thinking about your escape plan. Also, much like the Swinging Blade combo, you can also sneak an X attack on the end of this for a finisher slice too. Now, moving away from your core attacks for a moment, let's talk about your special. See, unlike other weapons, your special isn't really an attack, but instead, both your entry and escape plans simultaneously. If you press RB when you're at a distance, provided the attack connects, you will then pull yourself towards the behemoth, and in doing so, you'll consume one of the four red blocks at the top of the screen. This is your weapon-specific resource separate to your stamina. Then conversely, if you press RB when you are right up next to the behemoth, you will instead backflip away to safety. This launched you up pretty high in the air and a good distance away, so as you begin to learn a behemoth tells, when you see certain attacks incoming, you can then react and get out of the area to avoid being hit. In fact, if you really want to be risky, then perfect timing will allow you to evade out of a headlong charge since you're able to backflip just before the impact. But I honestly wouldn't recommend trying this, in truth, as much as I would like to say this was planned, that clip was a total fluke. But it does work. Now since each move, both in and out, consumes the weapon charge, if you need to refill them, you simply need to get into the action and fight. The meter below fills up when you attack, and when it fills up, that replenishes one of your four charges. Hence why I said at the start of the video, the weapon gives you plenty of options, but you also need to be aggressive in the way that you use it. However, there's actually a little pro strat that I want to share with you guys. You won't find this in the moves list, but there's actually a way to make your chain blade charge go a little further. See, based on the information I just told you, using RB to pull yourself in and push yourself away uses a charge, right? Well, if you press RB the second a ranged wire attack connects, you can pull yourself in without consuming a charge. Notice how in this instance I use the wire attack, and the moment it connects I press RB, pull myself in and still have four charges. That, my friends, is the chain blade secret. It doesn't work in reverse, so you can't press RB when you kind of connect a close range hit because that would just be broken. I mean, that would then allow you to dash in and out infinitely. But with this technique in mind, it then means you only ever have to use your resource to get out of combat. Meanwhile, getting in is always free, which is sweet. Since the special doesn't consume stamina, it then means that if you want to get in and be a little bit more reckless, perhaps dip into that blade spin, aka the Bruce Lee special, then you can afford to perhaps expend all your stamina knowing that right after you can get right out and allow your stamina to regen. So this combination is going to be crucial to your high level chain blade play. Now on top of all your moves you also have a dash on B. All weapons have the ability to dodge but the difference with the chain blades is that instead of the conventional dodge roll that the other weapons have, you instead have this ninja dash. Early on, you might think this a little OP, I know I did, but the further on you go, you begin to realise that you're still just as vulnerable as anyone else if you don't time or position yourself correctly. The dash, much like the roll, has iframes or invincibility frames, essentially a few short frames during the animation where you can't be hit, and you can also use this to dodge through attacks. But if you come from the other weapons where rolling is your bread and butter, then learning to master the timing of the dash will take some getting used to. But more importantly, the dash is just great for repositioning. Rolls are a lot more based on reactions. You see something happening, you roll through it or underneath it. Meanwhile, the dash is more about seeing something about to happen and taking advantage of the speed and distance to then ensure that you're in the right place by the time that action completes. Perhaps you see a behemoth about to spin 180, well then you use the dashes to close on its head. Maybe you're trying to cut the tail and you see a tail slamming coming. Well then make sure that you're there once it lands. It's all about speed. That is what this weapon revolves around. Fast combos, quick burst damage, and mastering when to get in and do damage versus when to get out and stay alive. It's an incredibly fun weapon to use, and for me personally, the most satisfying one of the lot. Now, outside of the actual combat side of things, if you're going to use this weapon, you'll want to think sensibly about the gear and items that can complement it. Every Slayer carries a lantern, and as you progress, you can craft new lanterns. These fill throughout the hunt and can provide you with various buffs. Stamina buffs are especially useful for weapons like the Chain Blades, since as discussed, they are heavily dependent on it and consume it very quickly. So a Stamina Lantern is something you should consider factoring into your loadout if you really want to unleash your attacks on the Behemoth. In addition to that, when you begin crafting weapons, you'll have access to different elements. And since the Chain Blades are a fast attacking weapon, they can really take advantage of these. Blaze Ether inflicts burning damage over time. Shock Ether will then see that damage spread throughout the parts of the monster, and Frost Ether will see frost accumulate on a behemoth part, freezing it in the process. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. That was my tutorial for the Chain Blades in Dauntless. I'll be putting together tutorials for the other three weapons, and they'll be dropping over the course of the next week on the run-up to the Alpha. 
That way, for any of you guys diving in on the 18th, by then you'll have videos explaining whatever weapon or weapons you decide to use. If you have any further questions, let me know down below. But for the time being, thank you very much for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.